One of the most chilled out uh, processes of getting out of Brazil and into Paraguay, if you know what you're doing. To get out, you have to go to the airport, which is about four or five blocks that way. To get in, you come to this pretty rundown building, for which I was the only person apart from the chap who stamped my passport. So, the passport's now done. The road behind me, you can see just going that way, that is the road into Paraguay and I'm following that for the next few hundred kilometers. We've only just arrived in Paraguay and it's amazing! Look at this! Absolutely amazing national park I'm about to enter. This has just put me in a great mood. I love Paraguay. Loving Paraguay's work. The reward of being in Paraguay is there. It is, without a doubt, the most beautiful scenery I've seen on this trip so far. And actually the thunder and the odd bolt of lightning coming down just adds to the atmosphere. Is that not just amazing? These who are just down there said I could stay here tonight. Uh, but this chap here says I can't camp here tonight. So I bought myself some food. So I've got a little bit of food to be able to get by, but it was just like Blake, no. I've made my way to the uh, weighing station for lorries, which is right here. Uh, there's a very friendly chap called Edgar, who works here, and he says that I can camp everywhere I want, whenever I want. So I'm gonna camp here, chill. I may even be able to have a shower, which is a massive bonus. Just packing up um, before I head off down this road. It's 140 kilometers straight to Concepcion. Uh, Glamour, this is my breakfast. This is out of date coffee, which uh, I'm getting through uh, and one bag of porridge. And that is my food supplies to power me on. Uh, I just asked my friend uh, Edgar, who let me camp here tonight, where his rubbish bin was pointed into these bushes and went there. Obviously I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna tie it to my bike, cycle it to the next service station and drop it in a bin. But it's that mentality, which is just so heartbreaking because. Center, uh, this is the petrol station and stuff behind where for me, it's just the easiest place to get water and stuff. So uh, it's hot. It's very early in the morning time is it? It is uh, 9.30 and it is already baking hot. A uh, little Scottish boy is sweating away so left right leg is giving me massive problems. Got some issue coming down the inside here when I'm pushing down and I think it's because uh, yesterday I was off-road moving it the bike a lot like this and I just tweaked something. So I've made it to Concepcion. It's very windy here. Um, it's been a long day. And coming into Concepcion, uh, it's gonna get. So this is you can see the old kind of architecture here, old town, the old churches. The actual town seems to be quite run down, um, as is most things seem to be in Paraguay. But you can see all the old touches around I'm about to head west it's about 650 kilometers to the Bolivian border it's a part of the daily routine of just making sure that you've always got everything you need you know my big hurdle at the moment is water I don't know how to do water in Paraguay clock in the morning uh, and sweating so badly already um, it's 24, 25 degrees outside. <sighs> it's just gonna get hotter as the day goes on. If it's too hot, stand in your bedroom and put on your clothes. It's definitely too hot to cycle 150 kilometers. That's what I'm gonna do today. The faster I go, the less hot it is. So that's my mantra for today. Now I am on top of the uh, bridge crossing the River Paraguay. This is Concepcion here, and as you can see, in all directions it is absolutely flat i am probably at the highest point of anywhere i can see in a 360 degree thing very difficult to point things out because 
of the camouflage but there are just birds everywhere huge big birds flying up seeing over there on the pole and they're all gathered around this pond and there's fish jumping um, in here so this is where they're all coming to feed there's eagles um, river birds parrots flying over it's an amazing amazing array of wildlife in this one little patch indication of what animals I'm potentially up against out here in the uh, in the wilds of Paraguay there's another one um, to I would guess caimans I'm being chased by a rottweiler there's a rottweiler <laughs> right behind me chasing me on my bike <laughs> he was running down the road the opposite way he looked at me and went I'm gonna chase you the road seems to stop. I don't know if it's going to be terminal for the rest of the trip, but I got 610 kilometers until I get to uh, Bolivia, and it could well be on a track like this. Uh, just stocking up on some food. Uh, Un vaso de qué? Okay, ¿cuánto cuesta? Cuatro mil. Cuatro mil. Is that a grande? grande. Okay, grande. So I'm just at the stop. Uh, that's dog uh, meat hanging up. Um, this is around. It's all the stuff you can get. Hola. That is actually a dog skinned to be eaten, which is going to make me think very carefully about eating meat uh, for the rest of this trip. I am on the main road between two of the largest cities in Paraguay. This is the only way to get from Asuncion to Concepcion. And one, there's no traffic at all, but there isn't even a proper tarmac road. And this is the central infrastructure for a country. So alien to think. Yeah, just get these almighty shower storms that just come down on you at, just for a few minutes, drench you. And then the road, it's full of this puddle that goes along there. The only surreal thing is it's, the water is boiling, so you're it's basically like cycling through hot water. A little bit unbearable today. Been on the road for 130 kilometers. It is well above 30 degrees, 35 degrees, and there's no shade at all. This is basically the crossroads where you go to Asuncion, which is the capital of Paraguay, and uh, Concepcion, which is I think one of the biggest, one of the largest, if not the second largest town in cities in Paraguay. So